Welcome back to another episode of All Things Everything presented by Gulf Coast Smoke. My name is Alonzo. And I'm Sabrina. And this was episode 33, you said? 33. 33. All right. And it's been a little bit since that we've done this. Uh, sorry about the intermission, I guess. I don't know. Sorry that we haven't been doing the podcast, but we've uh, we've been doing, we've been filming a lot. We've been in front of the camera a lot. Well, I've been in front of the camera a lot. You've been behind the camera a lot and you've been editing a lot. It feels like you're editing almost, I don't know, maybe three or four days a week. No? Yeah, it just maybe. depends. Yeah, it just depends. But yeah, we've been we've been putting out a lot of uh, backyard content, right? And that's been our focus for a little bit. But besides that, what we really wanted to kind of get into today was, of course, some recent recipes, some recipes that might be coming up. And also just kind of wanted to catch up. What have we been up to? Uh, what have you been up to? What have I been up to? If people care to listen or or know. But first and foremost, I mean, how, how has everything been with you? What's What's been going on with you? Uh, everything has been good. Just, uh, I mean, as you mentioned, been editing. Mm-hmm. Um, we're pushing a lot of backyard content right now. Uh, of course, we want the balance of the competition and the backyard content, right? Because... It's like we did a lot of competition videos and then people want to see the backyard stuff. We've been pushing a lot of backyard stuff and, you know, people are starting to miss the competition. But it's uh, not really by choice. Um, Right now, it's just, you know, you only get certain weekends, um, like full weekends, four-day weekends off for us to be able to go compete. Um, So then you have to make sure that there's a competition available Mm -hmm. during that weekend. And also, it's just been very, very hot. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's, I don't know. Again, I'm sorry. It's been a while since we've done a podcast. So I don't know how much you guys actually know or what I've actually said. So I apologize about that. I probably should have gone back and listened to what we last talked about, but I didn't. So just is what it is. So yeah, right now, you know, uh, work is really busy. Uh, My day job is really busy. So I only get every other weekend would be my only opportunities to compete. So Whereas before, I mean, we were just going every weekend pretty mm-hmm. much. And, and uh, yeah, that's why it felt like we were doing a lot of content because we were competing a lot. And that's just, it is what it is. And uh, now, with the fact that I can only compete every other weekend, it does make it hard because on my two-day weekends, on my short weekends, um, you know, we, we do want to try and focus at least one full day for the most part on, on our family, right, where we try not to worry about content or anything like that so then that really only leaves us one day and we still have to do some backyard stuff and you know it's it's just been a struggle uh things hopefully should get better because you know we're looking to get somebody else at work and that's gonna balance things out again so that's number one and like you mentioned right now the heat hey i can handle the heat you can handle the heat even though it sucks we can handle it but we really did notice um Back at our last competition, which was what it was in Jordanton, right? Was that the last one yes. we did? Okay, yes. and it's been like over a month now mm-hmm. since we've competed. You know, we just noticed that it it was really hot, and man, our kids were struggling, which is not very common. I don't. I mean, yeah, they've they've like struggled before at competitions, right? It's really hot, but man, they for sure were just kind of struggling. You yeah, know. they I, they love going to the competition. Love it. So when they're there and they're to the point where they're like, "Man, I can't wait to go home. I yeah. just want to go home." Yeah, like I'm I'm done with it. Yeah, like I don't care what we get. Like I'm ready to go home. For sure. That's when you know. For sure. So this competition also, you know, like I I don't know. Their faces were just really red. They were exhausted the very next day. Napping during the day. Our kids don't nap like that, right? Well, Alonso does, but like Piper and Penny, they don't nap. But Piper wakes up pretty early. She slept really, really late. She slept in. Penny slept in. And, you know, they're just sluggish all day. And, um, I mean, we noticed that it's just it was hard for our kids, right? So it is very hot right now. I know that even when we do go coming up, obviously it's still going to be that hot. But we're trying to make adjustments and, hey, y'all stay inside, you know. Stay on this side of the, our small little trailer and focus on hanging out, watching TV, do what you do. But um, we just we just have to work on those things because it was too hot and it is very, very hot right now. So that being said, again, we will 
do our best to make sure that we're on top of trying to keep everybody cool. Like I said, if it was just you and I, we'd be fine. We can go as much as we want. But it's not you and I, and that's just not an option. We're going to take the kids. Uh, that's just the way that we do things, right? So our kids are with us, and, yeah, we're not going to put them in a situation where they're really uncomfortable. I mean, you know, you see what happens to me. I get pretty bad heat rash, like, all over my face, my forehead especially, and my chest really bad. But, I mean, I'm okay. I mean, I can still go. I'm still hydrated. You know, I'm still yeah. good. I drink a lot of water. So, yeah, it's um, it, it's it's something that it does kind of stink not being uh, able to go or not going. But it just, like I said, it is what it is. Yeah. I mean, the kids even now, they're at, they ask every weekend, like, are we going to a competition this weekend? You know, they, they still really enjoy it. But mm-hmm. it is hot. I mean, even with all the backyard content that we've been doing, yeah. I mean, we've been spending full Saturdays uh, yeah. outside yeah. film, trying to film two videos at once. And even it's hot. then, it's hard. yeah, I mean, and we've got a lot of shade in our backyard too, but it's so hot that by it, it's almost like going to a competition by the end of it. For sure. You're worn out. Mm-hmm. Um, like me, I get it. Like I'll have a lot of adrenaline getting through the day and then towards the end I get a headache. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, for sure. And also I think one of the things that's, it makes it to where it's really, really hard just to film all day towards the end of the day. Like, you don't want to finish. You don't want to – you don't even care to cut the meat and get the good shots. And if the shot's not perfect, you're a little more aggravated than you would normally be. And then you have to calm down, do the outro, still seem, you know, outgoing and happy and all that stuff. And it's – believe me, it's not as easy as you guys would think, right? Like, even getting ready for the podcast today, it's like – you know, I've had a long week at work. We've been outside a lot. It's just really hot. Um, I mean, just uncomfortable, really uncomfortable to be outside. I was hanging up stuff at work today. I was using tools. And again, it is what it is. That's my job. But man, you get home and you're tired, you're exhausted. And then I come in here, I'm like, okay, yeah, I want to do the podcast, but I'm tired. I can feel I'm tired. So I try and bring myself up and even bringing yourself up, believe me or not, believe it or not, that requires energy. For sure. So you're you're exerting energy to try and be a little bit more entertaining, even though on the podcast we like to be who we are, right? So it, it just it's just not the easiest. But this is not this is not for us to complain. We're just letting you know what's been going on. Mm-hmm. Right. So one of the things that we have, like Sabrina said, we've been doing a lot of is a lot of backyard filming. And honestly, for me personally, I've been having fun doing it. Yeah. I've, I've, I don't want to say it, but the truth is I don't even miss competing. That's just me being 100% honest. And the reason I don't is because I feel this is very fulfilling. It's very fulfilling because we've been able to make some just delicious food, eat it at the house, enjoy it together or with family. And it's just been awesome. And one of the things that we unfortunately still haven't done very well is make shorts. But we kind of talked about it today. We we do have a little bit of a plan. We're going to try and go weekend and weekend and weekend and weekend making shorts and long form shorts and long form. And on the weekends where we're making shorts, make two or three, you know, and uh, hopefully spread them out to where we do have a good amount of shorts and a good amount of long form content. And we're, we'll figure it out because – I mean, realistically, we don't have a choice. We'll figure it out. It's hard. We Again, I have a day job. You're homeschooling the kids. Uh, you're taking care of the kids. It's it's just hard. Uh, but that's exactly, that's exactly what makes it almost kind of fun is that we do, we, we do have a lot going on. We're still chasing this dream, and, and we're still going to, you know, we're still going to reach our goals. It's just hard. And, the cool thing about it is we have taken a step back. We've tried to really evaluate how we're doing things. Hey, we don't need to be doing this. We do need to be doing that. Uh, hey, let's not focus on this so much. Let's focus on that. Hey, maybe let's work on storytelling a little bit better or intros to our videos or thumbnails or whatever. If you guys pay really close attention, like you'll notice our thumbnails have changed a little bit. Not very much. Little subtle changes to where we're trying to make it to where if you go to our channel and you scroll for a few seconds, all the thumbnails look similar not exactly the same but they look similar so that's something that we're working on and then of course me I'm trying to work on my camera presence being somebody who can entertain while 
providing entertainment well while impre- while providing like um, educational things, right? Hey, this is what I'm looking for when I'm smoking a brisket. And then of course, showing people like, Hey, this is a good brisket or whatever it is. So like, for example, this weekend, we're going to be filming some stuff, some educational stuff with the Weber Smoky Mountain and or with a brisket, because I think that people really look for those things when they come to barbecue YouTube. And uh, hopefully we can be a way that people can learn more about barbecue. Yeah, and I've been really enjoying the backyard content as well. Um, It's a lot of fun to edit. They're shorter videos, which makes them easier to push out. So we've been really staying true to the two videos per week that we've been wanting to do. Mm -hmm. Um, I I do miss doing competition videos as well. They're a lot of fun. Um, just because it's, it's like a vlog of the whole experience. Uh, usually the whole family's in it. Now, have you felt like the backyard content is, or, or have you felt like editing it is hard now that you have to do two videos a week? No, they're, they're pretty easy to push out. For example, um, a competition video. I mean, I can get it done in 24 hours. Um, if I'm just doing that and only that and really pushing it, but usually, I mean, it's best to spend two to three days working on that, yeah. especially when I'm home with the kids. But the uh, backyard content, I can usually push out within, you know, you know, I mean, eight anywhere, hours almost. anywhere from three to five hours if I'm trying to be quick. I mean, if I get all my things matched up, like, at nighttime and then wake up in the morning and just get the rest done, it only takes a couple hours. Uh, now, so what, about, what about quality? Do you feel like the quality of the videos has gone down enough or not enough at all? I have my answer, but I'm curious what you think. No, I don't think the quality is... Yeah. The, no, I agree. I it's agree. like comparing oranges to apples for yeah. me, you know, because... Uh, well, I just mean like the overall... Okay, if we were only doing one video a week and you were only focusing on that, do you feel like that one video would be better than if you had the two videos, right? Like, so for example, uh, we've recently done a bean recipe and crispy chicken wings recipe. Let's just say you didn't have to put both of those out on the same week mm-hmm. and you could do the crispy chicken wings on one week and the beans on another. Do you think they'd be better or do you think it'd be exactly the same? No, I, I mean, for the most part, I think they'd be the same. Now, if if that's what we were doing and I only had that one video for the week, I mean, yeah, I would try to find ways to elevate it. Um, for sure. You know, if, if I have, if we have all that time just to work on an eight minute video, uh, yeah, I should be finding ways yeah. to improve it. For but sure. that being said, I think the quality is still there. The quality is still good. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm happy with the the videos we put out. Uh, yeah. Like for example, I really love the chicken one that we put out recently. Oh, for sure. I love the uh the outtakes. Right. Yeah. Um, in that moment when it happened, we were kind of just like, uh, I know there's a split second of man, like, is this video ruined? Yeah. Right. But when you're able, when you're out there having a good time and you're able to laugh it off, yeah. um, I think those moments are very special, especially when I'm editing. I, you know, I'm sitting there looking through the footage. Um, I'm smiling. I'm laughing while yeah. I'm working on it because I just know, like, it's a genuine moment. I it, think that that's the thing I like about it the most. I'm sorry to interrupt. Right. No, no, no. It's it's authentic. Right. It's 100 percent authentic. I'm like, not trying to burn yeah, chicken. You know, like there's there's times when. Like, I've had people reach out to me and be like, dude, I loved that video because when you took a bite of whatever, I can tell the second that food hit your tongue, you were like, oh, yes, this is it. And I think that that authenticity comes through on camera. Like, yes, we were literally laughing. Like, holy crap, this is hilarious. And, you know, we dropped that video yesterday, Mm -hmm. right? Yesterday. And, you know what? I'll tell you what. Everybody's always got something to say. And that's fine. I get it. We're putting ourselves out there on the internet. But guys, we're we're not we're not just throwing chicken away. We burnt it. I scraped it. We we take care of it. Like it's not a big deal. You don't have to necessarily tell me, oh, you should have cooked it this way or this way. We know how to cook all different ways, right? We chose to cook it that way because of two reasons, right? Number one, we had two whole chickens. We had a lot of chicken. Mm-hmm. I couldn't have used two zone for that, right? Yeah. There's not enough room on this on the save zone for two whole chickens. That's why we use the 26 inch. And I don't have a um I don't have a way of doing that with two whole chickens. It's just not possible. And we're and trying to sorry to cut you off. No, you're good. But we're trying to film, you know? So if if it's something, hard. If people just not, don't get it. 
Yeah, if it's not looking good, yeah, we're going to laugh about it, but we're also going to take it off so we can finish the video and com- have... You know, we're not going to have burnt chicken on the whole entire time we're yeah, filming. And, and then here's also the other realistic part of this is... The power of editing and filming is we can show you or not show you what we right. want. We chose to show you that because yeah. we thought it was funny. We thought it was hilarious. We thought it would be entertaining. We're we're not out here to do sh- do stuff to piss y'all off. You know what I mean? <laughs> I was about to cuss, but we're not here to do stuff to piss y'all off, okay? Like, we wanted to turn and burn some chicken. Well, we accidentally burned some. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, the chicken that that way to cook it is still absolutely incredible and it really truly is i'm not exaggerating that's my favorite way to cook chicken but you have to be careful and i proved it you have to be careful yeah if you're not careful you're gonna burn something and i did it and and i was saying that literally in the video and then for us to burn it is even funnier right it's like i was telling you guys hey watch out you can burn this chicken Holy crap. On the very actually, first flip, yeah. Yeah, I burnt it. So it's it's kind of funny. It's comical, right? We um you know, we don't do these things to piss you guys off. You know, it's it's not it's not our reason. And again, if we didn't want to, we wouldn't have showed it to you guys. Yeah. So anyway, that's just a little bit of a rant, I guess, because sometimes I'm just like I do still read through every comment and I do still try. So I have like a little thing I do now for basically 12 18 hours, I'll read all the comments and I'll respond to all of them. And then after that, I stop because I can't just live my life staring at comments and responding, but I'll respond for the first 12 hours or whatever. Uh, I mean, you've seen me do it. We post a video. I'll come into the computer room. I'll sit, I'll watch the video myself as if I'm a viewer, see if I find any issues with it. And then I'll read comments and I'll comment back to people and I'll respond. So I do like to be engaged with you guys for sure. So we do see all the good and bad comments, which believe it or not, there's 99% of the comments are great. We know that, but it just, the 1% does stick out sometimes. And that's just, I guess that's just the way that it is for, for me as a human. But again, you know, we're just trying to show you different ways to cook. Yes. You can use two zone. If you only have four leg quarters, cool. Do, Do it how you want to. We try and remind you guys in everything that you don't have to use the same seasonings we're using. You don't have to use the same method. Make it your own for sure. Yeah. I mean, the whole point is we're giving you um, an idea or an option or, or an option to either go with the recipe that we're giving you yeah, or build off of it mm-hmm. or, you know, remake it into something new. Yeah. So yeah. now that we're now that we're already actually kind of on the subject, right? So. We'll talk about the recipes we've recently put out that are already out. We won't talk about any coming up. You guys can stay tuned to the channel for that. And while I'm at it, uh, just want to throw it out there that we have almost 41,000 subscribers. So if you guys can subscribe to the channel, we would definitely appreciate it. I do truly think we can hit 75,000 this year. I know that that sounds crazy. I think we can hit 75K keep watching. Hopefully you keep enjoying the content we're putting out. Share it with somebody who might like barbecue, subscribe to the channel. And, you know, just, if you like, if you like what we're doing, you know, just do those things. And, uh, I'm, I'm, we're pushing, we're definitely pushing as hard as we can. And of course, as I always say, give us some ideas. If you guys have any ideas of what you want to see, please let us know. Please let us know and we'll be glad to uh, make a video for it. It might not be right away because it's hard. Trust me, sometimes we get a lot of ideas from people and it's like, okay, if I make a list, I got about a whole year of videos to do and then we'll prioritize them or we'll see what's kind of popping right then and there or whatever. But yeah, just give us ideas. Keep keep supporting. We appreciate every single one of you guys. It's uh, It's been awesome. But we'll talk about the recipes that we've done recently. So, recently we did the char grilled chicken, which we just talked about. How did you actually like that chicken? How did you like it? Oh, that's my one of my favorite like simple barbecue meals has to be barbecue chicken like that mm-hmm. with um like baked beans yeah. and broccoli. For that's sure. like one of my favorite things. But the so the chicken, uh, I love barbecue chicken thighs specifically. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, you know 
competition thighs are excellent. They're some of the best thighs. But yeah. the reason why is because you're scraping the skin and the skin is uh, a lot better to eat that way. Yeah. So that's why when you do backyard barbecue chicken, grilling it like that is so beneficial because you're not scraping the skin. Yeah. So a lot of the times when you just go buy a pack of bone on bone in skin on thighs, that skin is very fatty. Um, so I think when you get that char on it, it makes it much more edible. For sure. And uh, I, it's, I love the char. I know yeah. some people are probably thinking like, oh, no, that's more burnt than anything, right? Yeah. But I love it. It adds a good texture. It adds really good flavor. Yeah. Um, and I, I know you mentioned this in the video. There was one that was pretty charred and like, that's how I like it. I like my dark meat cooked a little longer, mm-hmm. more to that 200 range. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's definitely one of my favorite. And it's so simple. Chicken yeah. is so simple. Yeah, so it sometimes it seems like it's harder to cook because it's so plain but uh when you do that recipe and that method it's one of my favorites yeah and so let's talk about how we prepped it yeah so we ended up brining it we used malcolm's bird brine which i've really been enjoying lately Mm -hmm. we've used it on uh multiple different things recently so malcolm's bird brine we did italian dressing as well of course we did water and that was it right that was it. That was it. And and we brined it for six hours or whatever. I don't even remember, to be completely honest. But we brined it for a while, took it out, pat it dry, kind of, seasoned it with Southern Hospitality, and then just turn and burn. That was it. Yeah. And it I was think, really simple. The thing I love about Malcolm's brine is it's such a simplistic brine. Like yep. When I think of what a brine is supposed to be, that is it. that's what it is. Um, there's a lot of good brines out there on the market for competition, and they're all really good. But... They're not something that you're realistically going to use at home for yeah. the home cook, the backyard cook. So uh, if you're, you know, not used to making brines yourself and you're looking for a product to get to use in your home, that's one to start with for sure. For sure. And the, and, and th- one of the things that we can kind of parlay into a little bit is also when we're talking about one of our upcoming products called Trifecta, right? It's called Trifecta because brine, season, inject. Mm -hmm. The way that we built this rub, this product that's coming out, is a very, very, very balanced seasoning. We tried to make it as equal as we could. I mean, we could have made it equal, but obviously we're trying to still have something that's very good as a rub. But we made it pretty similar, salt and sugar, and then some other spices and pepper and stuff like that. And that's why we found that you can use it as a brine, right? Because it is pretty equal salt and sugar and a brine is salt and sugar right Right. so we found that kind of on accident we didn't even necessarily so we've been through so many versions of this seasoning that we're about to release and you i mean how many has it been it's been it's been i would say probably like three or four three or four and probably a year and a half since Mm -hmm. we first even started talking about it the very first time we ever made it what were we going to do it? What was it for? Do you remember? Oh, for our fry seasoning. Fries. It mm-hmm. was a French fry seasoning, right? Because we were seasoning all of our French fries this way. And we're like, dude, these come out banging. Yeah. Like, we're going to we're gonna do it for French fries. And then from there, we ended up saying, eh, there's a little bit too much of this. Let's take it out. We didn't like it. We didn't like it like that. I think it was the parsley. We, we, we wanted less parsley. So we cut the parsley. And we're like, you know what? Let's take parsley completely out. Even though it's delicious on these fries, Let's make it a really, really simple fry seasoning. We almost wanted it something like, uh, um, gosh darn it, I'm thinking of it in my head and I can't, like serendipity salt, like ish, yeah. right? It doesn't, it does not taste like serendipity salt. That's not what I'm saying. But when you think about it, it's just like a free flowing, really good seasoning. That's kind of what we were thinking in our heads. And then I can't remember what else we did. Oh, we, we played around with no MSG. And then, of course, we added MSG. And then um, we wanted, more black pepper, but we wanted it a smaller, uh, a smaller black pepper. So it kind of flowed and it, and it was, so sometimes when you use black pepper in seasonings, we're talking about volume now, right? So they separate. So the black pepper will go to the top and then there won't be any at the bottom. Right. So your, your first three, 10 shakes of it, man, they're perfect. They got that black pepper. They got all your seasonings in there. 
And then as you get closer and closer to the bottom, you have less of that black pepper. Right. And that's fine because, again, it's volume. But we wanted something that was really, really, really even all throughout. Yeah. So we made a smaller pepper, which is not like a table black pepper, but it's just a smaller coarseness. And, man, everything just really flows well together. And then we just started using it at competition. Again, this is never – this was never for competition. I don't know if you remember one of the first times we ever made it and tried it. Oscar and Christina were here and they were like, oh my gosh, what is on those fries? Yeah. They were tripping out. And that's what kind of got our, our brains thinking like, ah, this would be a great fry, like a fry seasoning, a French fry seasoning. Yeah. Uh, So this has really been a long, I would say, I mean, the longest one that took us to put into production, maybe, would you say? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and it's just because there's been so many versions, right? And then of course, once you even nail the version, um, let's get labels made and let's get an artist. Well, Brendan is our artist for everything we do. Shout out to Brendan. Uh, my friend that I went to high school with and graduated, played golf with him and everything. And he's just an out of this world artist. The way he does our labels is exactly the way we've asked him to do them. Make them very uniform, unique, but simple. And we just love the way he does the art on our labels. And, uh, he's really helped us build this, um, this brand and, and our, our look, our feel uh, very well. And he does it exactly the way we want it to, the way we want him to. So we really appreciate Brendan. I'm not sure if he listens to the podcast, but if he ever does, man, we, we really appreciate all the work that you've done for us. So then you got to worry about labels and then you got to go with your co-packer and you got to make sure all the samples and everything, it takes forever. Mm-hmm. But just to talk about it, I mean, when you hear this on Friday, I mean, I'm here to I'm here to let you know the labels are already fully done. They're at our co-packer. I mean, it's just a little bit of a waiting game now. And yeah. it's coming very soon. I'm excited about it. I do think it's going to be a great product. Um it's something that we've used in competitions. We never we never built it for that, but we've used it in competitions. We've got perfect scores with it. We've got first places with it. Um we've grand championed with we've we've done a lot, right? And uh, it's it's a blessing. It's really cool to be able to do that with your own product. We just started we started playing with it randomly on brisket out of nowhere. Ended up hitting a first place at Carfest, then hit a first place at uh, AT and T Stadium. It's just it's just crazy how it all works. I know our chicken is not that great, but we do use it on our chicken. I'll tell you this much: it's not my. I don't have the right to say who, but I promise you, there's a cook out there that uses it on his chicken, and he five. Out of five contests, he got three first place chickens with it. He's just a better chicken cook than I am, and I'm willing to admit that. You guys might be able to figure out who it was, but you know I'm not going to put it out there. Either way, uh, trifecta is coming soon, and it is something that you can use in your backyard as a chicken brine. It's going to be something that's, in my opinion, going to going to change the game for you. You can use it for so many different things. Have fun with it, and hopefully, you guys enjoy it as much as we do. I can tell you this much. We buy our own personal stash, and we literally have no more. Cause yeah. your dad's in love with it. We send him like what six bottles last time. Yeah, we sent him. My mom, my my mom texts me. She's like, "When are y'all gonna get more?" I'm <laughs> like, "Hey, we're out too." She's like, "We're gonna starve." Yeah, That's literally yeah. what she said. No, and and you know we're we're trying to get it battle tested out there. We're getting it into people's hands. They're really liking it. They're enjoying it. So hopefully, soon it's on our website, and soon it's in all of the retail locations. So sorry to kind of go away from. The recipes a little bit, but I did I did want to bring that up because obviously it's something that's very important to us, and uh, you know it's coming soon. Yeah, and so back to that chicken then. Yeah. Uh, we did brine it. Yep. Uh, and then of course, pretty much you're just flipping it consistently, getting that char, making sure it cooks evenly. Uh, bringing it to the outsides of the kettle. Yeah. For a more um indirect yep. zone, and uh the sauce. Yeah. The the sauce was really good, and now uh before we get to like the sauce we actually used i did see one of the comments someone was saying they still use our uh the, our, our backyard chicken recipe from a while back where we just take any barbecue yeah. sauce yeah. and you mix I that think italian we use head dressing country that time i think yeah and that's a really really good way yeah. to to do it as well but the sauce we went with this time i mean i thought it was great yeah no for sure it was uh killer hogs vinegar sauce killer hogs the barbecue sauce and killer hogs hot sauce yeah if you guys can't tell we love killer hogs products I'm here to tell you that 
when it comes to us using products, now first and foremost, we're not we're not like we're not Malcolm Reed or anything. And like we're not huge, right? Like we don't have a gigantic following where we're that influential. But I'll tell you this, we have gotten to the point to where we do only use stuff that we really believe in and that we really truly like. Killer Hogs products are just they're on point. Mm-hmm. All of them. Every single one of them. I have never tasted one of his products and been like, oof, that's not good. And that's one of the things I really respect about them. They have killer products. And it, if you've never tried their sauces, vinegar sauce is, and probably sometimes to uh, to a fault, you know this, I love that sauce. Mm-hmm. Like I, I'm like, hey, should we use vinegar sauce on this? And you're like, <laughs> relax, we don't need it on everything, right? But um, it's just it's just my favorite sauce. It really is. Like, Apple habanero from head country is very good, but to me, it's got nothing, absolutely nothing on killer hogs vinegar. Um, now there are different types of sauces. I get that, but I still would prefer vinegar sauce over just about anything else. And man, so I just did 50, 50 vinegar and the barbecue sauce. I don't know, maybe two tablespoons of hot sauce. It wasn't much. And it wasn't spicy. By no, any not spicy at all, but that. Adds it, it like tang. Yeah, it adds a little tang, and it, it really makes everything a little bit uh, a little bit looser. Right. Because the barbecue sauce does have some molasses in it, so it's pretty thick. But that vinegar sauce and the hot sauce really kind of loosen it up. Mm-hmm. Make it more like a glaze, a really, really nice glaze. And then whenever you put it over those coals and you char it, man, it just has a flavor that's, that's unreal, for sure. Now, and I'll also say that I'm pretty positive. No, I'm, I'm 100% positive. I've seen Malcolm use that before, the 50-50. Now, I don't know about adding the hot sauce, but I know I've seen him use his his sauces half and half. So I got that from him. And I was just like, almost like a like a kid that had like the light bulb go off. Like I was like, oh, let me go get some hot sauce too. And it was just so delicious. Yeah, and so that same day, we also filmed our bean recipe. Yeah. Something that a lot of people have been asking for. Sure. Yeah, no, I mean, the, the beans, man, to me, they're just so good. They're so delicious every time we make them. Um, I, I don't really know what it is. They're just, it's, they're so hearty. It's right. like a meal in its own. For sure. Um, it's not just a standard chato bean with, you know, bean, maybe a few vegetables and some broth. It's, you know, it's got some meats in there. So we got some sausage in there. We got some bacon in there. We got rotel. Then we do the jalapenos and onions. We do, uh, um, I'm sorry, Jalapenos and cilantro, of course, we do add the onions and all that stuff. Um, Pinto bean seasoning from Fiesta. We add Malcolm's Grande Gringo. We add some salt. And it all just comes together, and it's just so good. Um, When we made that recipe, there were a few people that were like, man, this is too complicated. I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to lie to you. Like, this, I don't think it is at all. I think it's a very, very, very simple recipe. Um, And this is just the way that we eat beans down in South Texas. Uh, I mean, we're from South Texas. We live really close to Mexico, right? So like this is, we have a lot of Mexican food down here. A lot of chato beans around here have some sort of meat in them. A lot of times people use like ham hock. A lot of people use pork salt, uh, bacon, whatever. There's always a meat in there. That's going to make it a little more hearty. The broth is always really rich and delicious and there's always veggies and stuff like that. So this is just what we're used to down here in South Texas. I don't think it's a it's a very complex recipe. It does take some time, you know. This one took us about four hours, 15, four hours, and 30. But, man, the beans just turned out perfect. If you guys haven't watched that video, you most definitely should go back in the channel and check it out because I did think it was a really, really good video. And if you guys haven't made the beans like that, I do think you'll enjoy them. Like, I'm pretty positive you'll enjoy them. Yeah, and I wonder what part they think is comp or uh, complex, right? If it's the ingredients themselves or the method. But yeah. to me, the the ingredients are very, very simple. There's sure. really not that many. No. I mean, and the thing is, is you can customize it whichever way you want. You can put yeah. whatever type of sausage you want. Um, if you only want to go sausage and no bacon or all bacon and no sausage, you can do that. Yeah. And like you mentioned, there's the, a lot of people use the salt pork, the ham hock. Um, and you can use, I mean... Gosh, there's about like 50 different types of Rotel. Yeah, for um, sure. And if not, you can, I'm sure you could even throw in like canned diced tomatoes, something like yeah. that. I mean, there's lots of ways that you but can But that's the thing, kind of like we talked about earlier, right? You can watch this recipe and you can say, I don't think I would like any of that. That's cool. Instead of using sausage, 
why don't you go get the little cubed ham? Yeah. Instead of using bacon, why don't you get that pork salt or whatever? Instead of using the Rotel, like Sabrina said, can tomatoes or leave it out completely. Right. Man, you just get ideas from watching this, right? And that's the that's the beauty of it. It gets your imagination going. Like, mm-hmm. oh, that those beans look good, but I think I can make them better. And do it. Yeah. Absolutely do it. That's what there's a reason why we put recipes out there. It's not because we think ours are perfect or anything like that. It's to just kind of get your brain going. Like, hey, okay, yeah, I can do that, or I could do this, and I think it's going to be even better. Man, share that recipe back with us. Let us know. We're, we'll, we would love to try it, too. Yeah, and uh, kind of like you mentioned, those beans are very hearty. They're one of my favorite things to eat because, like, and I think we've talked about this before, like our favorite foods, but uh, soup is one of my favorites. Mm-hmm. So those beans, to me, they're almost like a soup. For sure. And uh, they're a little bit thinner on the broth, uh, which I really, really love. And I could only eat beans. And, I mean, it's been so long, or it had been so long since we really even had beans like that until we started competing and, you know, a lot of the guys around making beans, giving us yeah. a cup. And then you remember, like, dang, I really like beans like this. No, for sure. You know, so now I think it's one of those things that we we make, I mean, at least once a month. Yeah, uh, at the might house. E- yeah, it might even be more than that just because yeah. we really, really like eating it. For sure. Um, but, yeah, uh, it's got to be one of my favorite. I, I don't know if you would consider that necessarily a barbecue item. Uh, I mean, I or just consider side, it a side. I, to I me, mean, it's I, just a side. Yeah, I could eat it as a meal. But For sure. we're going based off sides. It's one of my favorite, favorite sides. And yeah. Uh, yeah, like to pair up with the chicken, that was a really, really good meal. Yeah, for sure, 100%. Um, so go check that video out and and let us know what you guys think. Was it was it complex? Is it complicated? Is there anything that you would do different than us? And like I said, let us know. Yeah. We love we love having the conversations about it. That's what makes all this fun. Yeah. It really does. Engage with people who have the same interests as us, as us and just, man, that's, that's the best part of it for sure. Yeah, and I know it's harder to grasp the entire method because we can't we can't just include all the footage of the whole time that pot was on the stove right but it is really as simple as just having it on the stove lowering or um turning up the heat turning it off and just occasionally stirring just to make sure it's not burning and that's it i mean if you want it thicker you can let it reduce a lot more than that um but yeah definitely go try out that recipe and so the next recipe that we have to talk about is our kettle fried wings. Yeah. And that's kind of been a trend that's happened um, before. before. We've seen it. Yeah. But that was, I think that's our first time actually doing a video on it. Yeah. And you know, it's, it's one of those things I don't, I can honestly say I didn't go watch anybody do this before we did it. I don't know what recipe people's are people's. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know what recipe people are using or anything like that, man. We just did it a simple way. And they turned out very good. Flour, we mixed in Southern Hospitality until we saw the color change of the flour. We just dry, squeezed the the flour into them, threw them on the kettle with a vortex really, really hot. It got crispy on one side. We used Pam, flipped them, crispy on the other. They're done. We ate. It's, I mean, it truly is that simple. This recipe there's not much to talk about because I just told you what we did. Obviously, go back and watch it so you can kind of see the little things we were looking for and how they turned out in the end. And one of the things that you can see and hear in the video is the crunchiness. It was truly like, it was like, oh my gosh, like these are amazing. So, but it's simple. I think what took it over the edge for me was the mixture of the Frank's or if you're using Killer, Ho- Killer Hogs hot sauce, that'd mm-hmm. be a good substitution for that. Yeah. But, and the barbecue sauce. That sure. mixture of barbecue sauce and hot sauce is so, yeah. so good. Yep. And the thing I love most about when we put out recipes, uh, specifically that one, is, you know, when later that day or the next day, people are already posting on Facebook, hey, I tried this. Yeah. I think I saw what, uh, Corey yeah. made it for a dinner either the next day or something and but he said he liked it yeah yeah it's 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 a that's an amazing feeling and again that's one of the reasons why we do this uh is to give you guys some confidence and different ideas to go into the backyard and cook something good for your family for sure uh it, it so like sabrina said it's really it's really really awesome um one of one of the other things i wanted to talk about because those are the recipes that we had kind of been been putting out one of the things I wanted to talk about is 
So the other day I ended up posting a little sneak peek picture of uh, of a barbecue pit, right? So on this barbecue pit, it has a shelf on it, and our logo, no, I'm sorry, our company name, Gulf Coast Smoke, is etched into it. So we do got something new coming. If you guys have looked at the picture, you can tell what kind of pit it is. We won't talk about it here. Go look at it. It's on our Facebook but we do have a new offset smoker coming. Don't know exactly when, but we do know that it is coming. So, if you guys want to see anything specific when it comes to offset cooking, most definitely let us know and most definitely reach out. Now, I'm also here to give some other news that might be a little bit sadder. That does mean that we're going to retire the TMG Fridge 48. But I'm here to tell you that from the second we had it, even until now, we're still cooking on it. As of right now, it's such an amazing pit. Mm-hmm. Truly, it is such an amazing pit. The problem with it for us is it's just too much pit. We don't use it enough to justify all that space in there. And, you know, that's really one of the reasons why we kind of started looking for something different. This up to uh, this upcoming pit that we're getting, we're going to be able to use for competition as well. So that means that we'll retire drums. So we'll retire drums. And we'll retire the TMG and it's just going to be onto something different and onto something new and a different challenge, which we're really excited about. But one of the things, again, this all, it, it all comes full circle. We talked about one of the hardest things about cooking with drums is that you have three or four fires to tend to. You don't really tend to them, but you're consistently opening up drums and you're standing next to drums and you're making sure your temps are good. We like to you, spin the grates. We a like lot to spin the grates a lot. So you're constantly next to heat. Mm-hmm. And then it's hot outside and it's tough. Now, this pit that I've got coming, I know, I've seen it. it runs like a dream. It, it's an offset, but it runs like a dream. You only have to check it every 45 minutes or so. We're not going to be needing to uh, spin any grates anymore or do anything like that. But again, the products that we're using right now are incredible. We love our race crew. We love our TMG. You know, it's just this is going to make things a little bit easier for us. So we got something new coming. If you want to see anything on the offset smoker, just let us know. We'll be glad to do it. I can't wait to unveil it, show you guys what we got. Uh, again, if you already if you follow us on Facebook, you, you know what it is just because, I mean, it's pretty obvious, right? It's pretty obvious what it is. But either way, um, yeah, just think about that. Think about some things that you might want to see or or know about offset cooking. Again, here, I'm always going to tell you this. We're not professionals. I don't call myself a pit master. I call myself a guy that likes to barbecue in the backyard. Sometimes it comes out pretty damn good. That's it. So we can't necessarily give you a professional, professional look or view on it, but we'll give you our view on it, and hopefully it helps you guys out. So, yeah, just be on the lookout for that. That's hopefully coming within the next – few weeks mm-hmm. yeah that's gonna be a fun tran- transition yeah no to doubt go to, a, to an offset because like you said now it's only i mean with the exception of chicken it's only one kettle kettle yeah it's only one pit yeah. to have to open and close and we will and need like to. a kettle or something in order right. to cook chicken if we're doing halves but i mean we're gonna try and line it up to where even if we're doing thighs we could do it all on that yeah you know so we'll but again we'll figure all those things out um the way I am is I'm stubborn. We'll probably not practice with it and just take it to a competition right. and we'll figure it out there. Cause that's, I was just about to ask, are we going to maybe nah. do a couple practice rounds? Nah, nah. I'm the same way though too. I'm, I'd I mean, probably just take it out I there. I mean, I'm, I promise I'm not trying to downplay it, but like, who cares? Just go right. cook. Just go cook with it. Yeah. Just go cook and figure it out while you're there. Yeah. As long as you get the temps around the same and you, you trim the meat yeah. the same way. It's going to, yeah, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be fine. It's just barbecue. You know, and like I said, I'm not trying to downplay it. Obviously, when I go to competitions, I want to win. I want to win everything. But it's just barbecue. Um, and it'll be okay, right? So we'll we'll take it out there eventually, and we'll do what we can, and we'll see what happens for sure. But, um, yeah, so next competition coming up is, I think, on the 19th, which is 16 days from now, which is still over two weeks away. Mm-hmm. Um, we, we we could have gone this weekend, but we just decided since it's a holiday weekend, we'll st- we'll stay around. Stick around the house and hang out with family and uh, take the opportunity to film a little bit more content. And, yeah, just kind of go from there. But, um, 
now that we kind of talked about all the barbecue stuff, I kind of wanted to just get into personal. Like, hey, I mean, what have we been doing personally? But like in our downtime. Oh, gosh. So first of all, and I don't know how we've gotten to this point where we haven't watched it in like a whole week. Yeah. But man, we've been glued to suits. Yeah. So that's how our weekends have been going is we pick one full day to just film. And then that next day, we're trying to binge watch Suits. Yeah. And, oh my gosh. Suits like, is a great, such a great show. Yeah. Such a great show. But we like, haven't watched in like a whole week. Yeah, we haven't watched in like a week. But um, this week has been kind of weird just because it's been a short work week. Right. And I've been busy. I've been coming home like, oh man, I'm just beat. You know, I'm beat. Yeah. And, uh. You know, yesterday the kids didn't clean their damn room and it was a big old ordeal and had to work on that. And, you know, just being a dad, being a parent. But, um, and then we cook, we've been cooking a lot more at the house now. So it does make things a little bit harder. Um, I might have talked about it on the last podcast or 20 podcasts ago. I don't know. I mean, but I, I'm telling, I'm here to tell you again, like I'm trying to eat better, do better. Um, it's crazy. Like, I told you on day one, I was like, dude, I feel horrible because I'm not trying to not eat carbs, but I'm trying to eat less carbs by like a drastic amount. So, but I am eating carbs like that night for dinner, Sabrina made potatoes, um, those little golden potatoes. And I ate like a fourth of a cup of them. Wasn't much, but I still had them. Other than that, the meal was extremely clean. Yesterday I had no carbs all day and today for dinner, like I'll have a few um, like healthier carbs is what I, I guess I would like to call them. But from day one to, to today, I, I feel like so much better because day one was really hard. I could feel like my body was like, you, it could tell like you're doing something way different than normal because usually I ain't going to sit here in front. I go to work, I get a coffee. Most of the time there's S and J's or tacos or something there. Oh yeah. I mean, it's, and it's like, man, I love S and J's. I love tacos. Yeah, throw me a dude. I mean, the guys, our vendors, they'll bring like the Q taco from uh, it's like Seven Eleven or something like that. It's it's bacon, egg, bean, cheese, potato. And that's like how I get mine. Yeah, right? it's and it's just like, yeah, you tell me I'm gonna turn that down. <laughs> yeah. Heck no. But anyway, so I mean, like I'm used to eating a taco in the morning with a with a Celsius or a coffee, and boom, whatever. And then for lunch, it's like we go eat whatever we want. Boom, whatever. Like, and I'm when I tell you, like, I mean, you know it. I made a drastic change to where I basically went cold turkey. And I'm telling you, like, my body felt it. I was like, oh, something's wrong. Like, but now that I'm past it, I feel really good. I really do. And it's only day three, so I can't wait to see what I feel like after a full week or even two weeks. And even you, like, you started working out too. And it, it's it's just something like I do. I don't know what it was the other day. I can't remember, but I remember having like this little moment where I was like, dude, we need to show our kids that like, this is the life that we should be leading for sure. Because like, I ain't going to sit here in front, dude. Like, you know me, I'm horrible about it. I'll go to the store and I'll be like, you know what? I'm going to grab my kids, like even the smallest little candy and come home. And then like, let's just say that happens three or four days in a row. And then on day five, they're like, deck, we have candy. I'm like, no. And then, their little brain probably doesn't understand. We're like, well, well, shit, he gave it to me for four days in a row. Like, why yeah. can't I have it on day five? That's not their fault. That is my fault. We are molding our kids right now, right? Like, I hate to say that they're not puppets, but we are molding them. We're shaping they're them. They're sponges. They're sponges. Everything we do. So, like, even the other day, and I, I think I know what it was. Yeah, I was about just about to say yeah, that. I think I know what it was now, out of yeah. nowhere. Like Penelope. Penelope, yeah. Yep. Penelope was sitting here and we were watching Suits in the living room. And she's like, Dad, how? Or she might ask you. She was doing the yeah, burpees. She was doing burpees yeah. in the living room. And I was like, You're doing it wrong, baby girl. Let me show you. So, man, how long was ago was it when I was like eating cleaner than clean and playing tennis um, and working out right a lot? Right before COVID. Yeah, right before COVID. Uh, it's weird. Like, <laughs> If you guys saw me now, you'd be like, there's no way this guy weighed, you know, less than 210. I was 208. I weighed 208 pounds. And you know, like, how hard was it to get me to break my... It, it wasn't even a diet at that point. Like, how hard was it to get me to, like, eat bad? It was basically impossible. 
Yeah, no, it, it, it had like become a part of your, your lifestyle. So yeah. it's like, that's just what was normal for yeah, you to be doing. For sure. Like I was always eating a grilled chicken and a grilled vegetable, some sort, or, you know, if we, if you made the kids spaghetti, like you would make me the zoodles, like you would even spiral them yourself sometimes with the zucchini noodles. And I was just like, that's when we found out about Rayo's or Rayo's or whatever it's called. Uh, no sugar, delicious. And we had, I just was so into it and I felt great. And I mean, I felt like I looked really good too. Um, and then it just, you know, it just life happened, COVID happened. And here we are now, but I have, for whatever reason, my brain feels like I'm there again. Mm -hmm. Like my brain feels like it's there. So I just have to get past that certain threshold. And then I know like, oh, I can do this. Yeah, I feel like I can do it now as crazy as it sounds just three days in, but I know what it takes because I have done this before. And, um, yeah, so Penelope was there and she's like working out like by herself. And nobody, she, does, she does this daily and nobody told her to do it. Yeah. Nobody was telling her to do it. And so she was doing the burpees and I was like, baby girl, you're doing it wrong. So anyway, my, the reason I kind of went off track and started talking about that is because I used to work out a lot too. And I was doing, and I would even do like burpees here and stuff, mm. you know? And so I was like, this is how you do it. And literally whenever I went down to do it, I was able to do it, but I felt like, oh, <laughs> damn, you know, that wasn't easy. Yeah. And bef one of the things about me at this point in my life, I'm 34 years old with three kids and we've been married for a while. Actually, our anniversary is coming up in 18 days. Uh, that's crazy. So that'll be what? How many years? Hold on. That's, what is it? 20, 24. So that's uh. Uh, so we had been together for uh, 13, 13 years, 13 and, years and, and married, married for, since. So it would be seven, seven years. Seven right? years. Yeah, so we'll be married for 13. I'm sorry. Married for seven together for 13 on the 21st. That's our anniversary for both. Eh. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway. um, And I still feel 18 years old. Like in my brain. Yeah. I, I, I really truly do. Like I don't mean like 18 like I'm an idiot. But I mean 18 like. I feel like I wake up and I can do exactly the same things I could right, as like I was 18. It's hard to imagine that we're responsible for three human beings. For sure. Right? Yeah. But um, that burpee was difficult for me. Yeah. And then, you know, it's it's little things that you kind of notice, but you don't really think about until I think that I dropped down to do that burpee. Then I started realizing like, man, you know, my pants are a little bit tight and my gut's hanging over my, my, my pants and, um, you know, little things and they actually kind of start to bother you. You're like, Hmm, I don't know about that. Like, I don't know if I like that. You know, I'm not, I'm not cool with looking like that or feeling like that. And, um, you know, with the exception of today, because today was really just a very draining day. I mean, this whole week, like I've been able to come home and, and not really go and just start being lazy and lay down or anything. Like, you know, I cooked was it yesterday, two days ago, I cooked and, Yesterday we were doing stuff or whatever. And, um, yeah, it's just, it's just, I, day three, I feel, I feel very good. And again, I feel like I'm in that mindset. And the coolest thing about it was back in the day, what I would do is I would just find alternatives. We would still go, like, I would still go and take the kids to get ice cream or whatever. I just wouldn't eat it. And then I'd come home and I had like Halo Top. Remember? Right. Yeah. I like, I always had birthday cake Halo Top on deck because, if I was, if I was having a bad day and I needed something like that's what mine was, or I had the chocolate bars, the Lily's chocolate bar mm -hmm. that's uh, sweetened with what stevia or whatever, and I would take I don't know if you remember it, it comes in like little bricks. I would right. take one little brick and I would eat it, and that was like my all right, you're good, you're good right. because it's it's not always easy, but I'm gonna try and get back to that. And um, you know I know they say don't listen to somebody or what what is that saying? It's like Never trust a skinny chef or whatever, man. <laughs> I mean, look at me now. I'm, I'm, I hate to say it like this. I'm not trying to be ugly. I'm fat now, so you could trust me forever. I just need to make these changes, um, and I'm, I'm really truly praying that I can stay strong when it comes to this because I do think it's important. And um, you know, again, you know, we recently were lost a friend, my friend Richie. You know, I don't know what happened. Um. But if it had anything to do with his health, you know, that's not something that I want to happen to you or I. And 
like, you know, when we first met, you know, like I looked even, I can't remember when it was, but I saw that picture. Remember that one day when we were at HB and I was wearing that pink, uh, um, what's it called when it's raining? The honcho, the poncho, poncho the poncho. <laughs> remember that? Yeah. I was wearing the pink poncho. And like, even just looking at myself then, like, I'm like, dude, I, I looked good. You know, I wasn't overweight or anything like that. And at that time, like you were running a lot and you, I mean, you still look great. Right. But you know what I mean? Right. It's well, like, no, it's like when we were watching the Olympic trials the other day yeah. and uh, we were watching the women's like long distance mm-hmm. and me and Kim were like, man, why aren't these chicks like picking up the pace? Right. And then I, <laughs> the other, I did my first workout in like forever. And then uh, I went to go run. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to do this many laps and shoot. I like sprinted the whole first one. I'm like, oh, I'm done. Yeah. I'm not going back out there. Yeah. No, I mean, it's, it's taking it slowly, but surely. Right. So for me personally, right now, I'm not, I'm not going to start working out hard just yet. Uh, I do want to start lifting a little bit of weights just to feel stronger. But uh, what I really want to get into, and um, you know, this is something we'll figure out. I want to start playing tennis again. I really do. I think tennis is such a great sport for getting out there and running and being physical and all that stuff. So Man, I was thinking about it. I'm like, man, we got to find a day where we could go to my parents' house, drop them off, and, like, me and you can go play tennis. And I was even literally thinking about it in my head. I know you played tennis a long time ago, but I don't know what your form is like or whatever, but, like, I want to work on it to where, like, you can hit the ball and I can hit the ball and, like, we can actually play and run. Because, like, I would play with Mashawn a lot, and, I mean, we would get it. Yeah. We would absolutely like we were 100 million percent trying to beat each other, like hitting it as hard as we could. And um, believe it or not, I was I'm actually well, I don't know about now because it's been a while since I played. I'm actually pretty good at tennis. Right. And I mean, I I got into it pretty hard with Mashawn and Mashawn's very good at tennis, too. And he's in great shape. So we were both kind of like we were going shoot three times a week. Yeah. And for like an hour and a half at a time. And I would come home just drenched. And then I was eating clean and I was working out and stuff. Man, it was just good. That feeling of like, oh, man, it's a struggle to to tie my shoe. Or, man, I can just feel like getting off of the couch is not as easy as it was. Like, that's when you know, all right, something's going on. Now, do I think I'm morbidly obese? Nope, I don't. But I'm 34. I'm not getting younger. So these things are naturally going to get harder. Right. But I'm making it even harder for myself if I don't lose some weight and get into shape. Well, I mean, like even me, and I told you this the other day, uh, like, for example, yeah, I don't drink as much water as I should unless yeah. we're like going to a competition, yeah, unless I'm outside water. yeah, doing yard work, if I'm actually exercising, like that's when I'm drinking the most water, right? So when I'm not doing those things, uh, a lot of the times I feel like lethargic mm-hmm. and uh like, getting up out of bed is, like, one of the hardest things, right? Because it's For like, sure. man, I got to start. Like, once I get going, I get going. But it's, yeah. like, finding that motivation to even, like, get out of bed and start the day. Especially for, like, me. I'm at home with the kids. I don't have a day job. Yeah. But it's, you yeah. still got plenty of responsibilities to do. No, for sure. But you have the ability to sleep in, if, technically, if you wanted, right? But you can't do that. We've yeah. got lots of stuff to do. So, I think, even for me, finding a balance of, like, and it's hard with the kids, right? Because it's hard to exercise with them. And then you don't want to exercise without them because I think it's a good... Uh, it's good it's to good show to, those habits, build right. habits. And like like you said, Penelope's a huge motivator because... Yeah, I mean, and that's one thing got, I was going to say. Yeah, well, she go got so... um, Like, uh, she couldn't do a cartwheel. Like, this was a couple of years back. And she couldn't do a cartwheel. And she spent every single day mm-hmm. training to do a cartwheel. And now she does it perfectly. Yeah. She's been training to do her handstands. She, she stretches them. every day. She does her splits and everything because she does dance. But that doesn't mean everybody in her dance class can do these same things. Yeah. So it's really, mo- she gets, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, she gets something in her mind and she's she's going to do it. Yeah. And she's going to make it happen. You know, and I think that's awesome. And she'll ask me like, hey, you want to do this with me or stretch with me? So I think it's really important to, yeah. especially... For somebody like her who's like super active and she wants to do these things, uh, to be able to do it with her, to keep that motivation that she has high, you know, and that also motivates us as well. But um, it's it's really inspiring to see when she gets when she puts her mind to something, like she follows through. Yeah. And so I mean I think that comes from us, but oh, it needs yeah, to stay sure. coming from us too. Yeah, I mean I think um, 
you know, obviously, yeah, I do. I do think that comes from us, right? Because even like, I mean, yeah, I'll say it. I'm, I'm stubborn. Like for even, for example, with GCS, like, no, this is going to work. There's no other option, right? There's no plan B. There's no nothing. This is going to work for us. Just a matter of when, right? It, it's not if it's when. So, but I was literally going to say the same thing earlier. Like my eight year old daughter literally made me want to change my whole life. I'm not exaggerating. I am not exaggerating. Like I was seeing her do that and I'm like, out of the corner of my eye, I'm like, this little kid is incredible, right? Like she's, she's insane. She's insane. She's like, (laughs) it's, it's so funny, right? Because she's a kid and she obviously still messes up, but like, even yesterday when I was getting on them, I literally, I had to like tell myself like, dude, she's such a great kid. Like, I know you need to get after her right now, but like you also should remind her like, Hey, you're, you're, you're awesome. So I don't know if you heard me say it. Like I literally was telling them, Hey, look like, okay, these are things you guys have to do. You guys have to learn these things. And I literally told her, I was like, Penny, I know, I know you clean. You do this, you do that. You're a great kid. Dude, I'll come home from, from wherever. She's vacuuming. Yeah. N- and she, nobody told her to do that. She'll change the laundry and start she'll, it. She'll yeah. change the, like, nobody's telling her to do these things. I literally have to tell her, and you've heard me say it. I say, baby girl, don't forget you're a kid. Yeah. Be a kid. Be a kid. Go rub dirt all over yourself. You're a kid. Be a kid. Right. You're not... Like, so make the mistakes, yeah. yeah, make mistakes. She gets caught up in like, I need to help my little brother. I need to help my little sister. And in that it's, it's amazing to see, but I don't want her to think like she's responsible for them. We for are sure. right. Yeah. We are. So anyway, not to kind of get on that too much, but Penelope definitely motivated me and, and made me think like, Hey, I really got to do this. I really, really have to do this. So shout out to my daughter, Penelope, right? Like hopefully one of these days she gets to listen to this years down the road and thinks like, wow, I, I motivated my parents every single day. She does. I mean, so do the other kids. Right. But uh, Penelope's extraordinary for sure. So anyway, I'm really hoping I can stick to this because it, I, I'm telling you, I'm not trying to sound weird, but what would that be? 20, 72 hours later, I truly feel better. Like already. I truly do. Um, like even right now, I don't have crazy cravings. I haven't had sugar. I'm trying to get away from, I think the biggest thing for me is not carbs, it's sugar. Get away from that. Get away from that junk. Uh, And that's another thing that I want to kind of instill in the kids. Like, hey, we don't have to have ice cream every... We don't have to have dessert every day after dinner or anything like that. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so that's one of the personal things that we've we've kind of been on is uh, you... You're starting to work on your health. I'm starting to work on mine, and we're going to keep doing it. So yeah, well, we need something to do now that Demon Slayer is over. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's the next thing I was gonna get into. <laughs> I don't know if any of you guys, um, and you know, again, this is really, uh, I'm really glad that the podcast went this way today because we were kind of worried, like, man, what are we gonna talk about? We we, you know, we didn't know, but man, this is a perfect opportunity to talk about all things, everything, you know. And we we haven't done a very good job at getting away from barbecue, but barbecue is our life. But yeah, so we, Demon Slayer is, oh my gosh, it, it was just, the Hashiro training arc is done, and they leave you with the craziest cliffhanger of all time. If you guys watch Demon Slayer or anime or anything like that, like that was the, I'm not even exaggerating, probably the best single episode of any anime I I've ever it got watched. rated like a perfect score or something. Yeah, I, I think it was like perfect or like. Point one less like than nine point nine, yeah. yeah. And that's the 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 cool thing about um, editing, and I know we both know this because we both have done it. Mm-hmm. Is then when you go and watch things, uh, you know, creative creatively, you start to think about not just what you're watching, but how somebody produced it and yeah. edited it. And man, the ant for anyone out there who's like, oh, I like <sighs> cartoons or animated things, like the animation on it is Dude. so good, and you can really see that if you go watch a different anime, yeah, and it's like. The quality well, is well, even like Kaiju there. number eight, we started it, yeah, and, and it's I'm good, yeah, it's good, and, and I'm excited to watch it. But the anime, it's not even close, not even close. And you know what the craziest thing is? I was reading an article, season this training arc was shot, and I'm sorry, not shot, 
It was completely done in 2022. That's over two years ago. And they were already doing that high quality of stuff in 2022. Now, how much has technology advanced in two years when it comes to editing? I, I don't know. But they did this over two years ago. And it comes out now, and it is still miles ahead of anything that I've seen. So that yeah. was literally the single best episode of any anime I've ever seen ever. For and sure. I've said this before, maybe not on the podcast. My favorite character of all time, anything anime, is Vegeta from Dragon Ball. Dragon Ball, Super, Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, all that stuff. Vegeta, hands down, no comparison. That's what I've always said. Man, I ain't going to lie to you, dude. If I watched (laughs) Demon Slayer first, Vegeta would not be my favorite character. I know that sounds crazy, but if I would have, let's just say I I picked up anime today and I watched Demon Slayer first, there's no way Vegeta would beat. Um, Man, I'm lying. Because Vegeta's just got that that nostalgia. No, not not the nostalgia. He's got that story. You know, he was a villain, straight up. He was a villain. Yeah, yeah. Came and he was a villain. Now he's a hero, and he's like best friends with Goku. Even though they're always down each other's back, you know. But it's um, man, I, I tell you what, dude, it's uh, it's incredible to watch these animes and and, and just the feelings that you get from watching like. An animation. Right. So literally, we were watching it, and towards the middle, um, I'm not going to spoil anything. Like I said, I don't really know how many of you guys watch it or whatever, but towards the middle, it's like, oh, snap. Things start getting really, really intense. Well, the thing is, it's like we both pretty much knew it was going to happen because we, unfortunately, like, if you follow Demon Slayer on any sort of social media, you pretty much get an idea of what's happening. I'm surprised you haven't seen any of the spoilers on, like... Well, uh, no, I don't know if I've really seen any, but... The thing is, is like I'm the t- I loved reading manga growing up yeah. and always watched like anime, um, and I've always been the person that's like, oh, I like books better than the movie, or I like the manga better than the anime. But Demon Slayer is one of those ones where it's like I'm, and we went, and I bought the mangas because mm-hmm. I'm like, Shh, I need to know what's going on. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like the animation on it is so good that like yeah, part of me wants want- to wait, but yeah, but I think it's gonna be so long you almost can't. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, it's going to, because now there's going to be the three movies and it, it's just going to be, I think it's going to be tough to wait that long. So, for sure. uh, unfortunately, so yes, I'm, um, I'm actually somebody that's pretty okay with spoilers and you know this, I'm pretty okay with them. Like they don't like, Oh my God, I'm devastated. Yeah. I know what happens at the end. I like, I could tell you pretty much everything what happens right now. Right. But what you said to your point that it's not animated. I know it in my head. I don't have any animation to it. I'm going to want to see that animated. For sure. You know, the the devastating things that I know are coming, like I want to see them animated. Yeah. They're just, well, that's because I've read like half the mangas already that we bought yeah. rereading it. And uh, it is pretty uh, like Aligned? exact. Yeah. yeah. But there's a lot of like the animation like puts things in motion. So you're actually yeah. like watching it happen. And there's a little bit extra when it comes to the anime. Right. right? As Probably. opposed to it being drawn out and it's like, well, we can only show this and this because it's a drawing. Yeah. A hundred percent. So yeah, I mean, it's uh, demon slayer. If you guys are into anime at all, seriously, give it a watch. Just give it a chance. It starts off pretty slow in season one. Um, There's some character. Well, there's a character that in season one, you probably are like, wow, this guy's whack. Zenitsu. Yeah. And dude, I always liked him though, but uh, yeah, I get how some people would be like, yeah. Oh my gosh. But see, like the funny thing and one of the best things about anime to me is like Zenitsu. Like his character, yeah. like, oh cute. You know, like don't watch it in it with English voices though. You yeah. gotta do Japanese voices with English subtitles. Yeah, I, like, I don't want to hear anybody. I agree. Oh no, yeah, you I'm, gotta watch it in English. Dragon Ball Z is like the only one that I think it's okay because lot, we grew yeah. up like listening to that. But anything yeah. else yeah, it's I gotta know, be in Japanese. I agree. I mean, I'm I'm a I'm a sub guy. I don't do dubs. Uh, we don't do dubs. We we watch uh, Dragon Ball. We even watch Dragon Ball sub. We'll rewatch it in dub just because I really really enjoy Vegeta's voice character in English and Goku's. Right. You know. Um, I mean, yeah. I mean, I even have that Vegeta pop is actually signed by him, isn't it? Right. I think so. Uh, yes, it is. So yeah, it's Chris Sabat Sabat and Sean Schemmel. Um 
Shamel, whatever, I don't know. That's the voice characters, and I really love their, I love those guys, so I'll watch it in dub, but I prefer sub all day, 100%. Uh, yeah. I feel like the Japanese voice actors are just, they get into, like, they, I feel like they get into it big time. Well, so Demon Slayer specifically, I do not like the English yeah. voices that yeah, they have no, for they're, them. They're because it bad. makes, it makes a character like, you know, Sky and Zenitsu, like, it's a, even worse. A little, yeah. Yeah, and, 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 and Zenitsu is one of those characters that you 100% can kind of, if you don't, if you don't have an open mind, you can dislike him, like pretty not dislike him. You can just be like, "Oh my gosh, like this guy's whack." Midway through season one, you'll never think that again about him, yeah, ever. In this most recent episode, I could tell you right now, he is the hardest dude. There he is. He is the <laughs> hardest. That's what like, like everybody's saying right now too. Oh, yeah. dude, every I mean, so you know you have. Dude, you just have to watch it. I, I can't even say anything else without it being a spoiler. Yeah. Zenitsu is the hardest, the coldest, cold-blooded dude ever when it comes to Demon Slayer. And if you watch it in the very first season and you give up, you don't get to this point. Yeah. He's on another level. You guys should try and watch it. So, anyway, we've been watching a lot of suits. We've been watching some animes, and we've been trying to enjoy ourselves in that way. But... We get like one day to do it though. So yeah, we end we up get, binge watching and then the next day we're like, oh, yeah, then we can't get do back it. back to everything. Yeah, I also got a uh, Lewis lit coffee cup. Yeah. It says, uh, what is this? You just got lit you up. You just got lit up. L I T T and lit is in red. So yeah, it's it's pretty it's pretty cool. But uh, yeah, man, I mean, we just really wanted to get on here today and kind of talk to you guys. Um, a lot of A lot of the things that we like to do is just talk to each other too. And you guys are hopefully enjoying and hopefully listening. But uh, even if you're not, it's okay. We're, we're here together. So we just wanted to kind of catch up. This is what we've been doing. We've been filming yeah. a lot of backyard content. We're getting ready and we're eager to go on the 19th to a competition, which again is 16 days away. Um, in the meantime, we've been watching anime. We've been watching Suits. Suits is great too. If you got Harvey Specter's the baddest dude on the planet. Um, if we ever had another son, it'd be like, I don't know, whatever, Harvey, something, <laughs> or, like, something Spectre. Uh, it couldn't be, though, because they, they've all have the same, like, initials and letters and stuff. Yeah. So. Yeah, PCC, PCC, ACC. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, you know, like I said, we'll uh, we'll keep doing what we're doing. Wait, does this mean you're down for another kid? No. <laughs> we'll keep doing what we're doing. You guys hopefully keep uh, enjoying the content. Like I said, just give us any ideas that you guys have. Yeah, because we want, I mean, we've got plenty of ideas, but we want to make what you guys exactly. want to see. Exactly. And that's what we're here for. All right. So uh, this week, we're going to be filming a video on our Weber Smoky Mountain, our top tips for using a Weber Smoky Mountain. So hopefully you guys are interested in that, and hopefully you guys look forward to that one. Anything else that you wanted to say before we go? No, I think it, I think that's it. It's time to wrap it up and uh, yeah. go watch some suits. Yeah, for sure. No, uh, again, appreciate you guys staying patient with us. Hopefully you guys have been enjoying the videos that we've been putting out and yeah, we really just appreciate you guys for following us along and don't forget, subscribe to the channel, uh, share with a friend, all that cool stuff. But if you're done, I'm good. We'll see you guys on the next episode. Peace.